Welcome again to the Sanford Edible Garden Trail. We are at Tullamore Farm and this is our third video, third, fourth, I'm not sure. Check the other ones out if you haven't seen them yet. We are here with Bill and we're at Tullamore Farm so you can also look that up on their Facebook page. And Bill and Carol are currently eating about 95 to 98% or growing, I should say, of all your fruit and vegetable requirements, which is amazing. And so one of the things that I'm so interested to know about is um, the management of that. Like, how do you actually plan the succession of plantings and also how do you store it? Okay, because... What, I mean, one of the such a challenge for people in everybody, myself, you plant something, it's wonderful, you're picking it, and then it stops, and then there's this back you, to you, square you're one. back to square one. And so it's that, that um, the systems around that. And I'm really intrigued, and I know that you've got good systems, so I'd love to. If you could just give us a bit of an overview Look, the of si what you the do. The systems all relate back. I've always been in business, financial planner, accountant. You've got to be systemized. If you want to be successful, you've got to be systemized. So for us, it was always a case of, and there was Buddy the Cockatoo, you heard him? Yes. Hi, Buddy. <laughs> uh, for us, it was always about if, when we, when we started becoming more and more self-sustainable, we wanted to continue it. So for us, it was a case of how do we ensure that we've always got carrots? How do we always ensure we've got fruit? How do we ensure mm. we've got everything? So it became a system. So we put in place processes that... We were planting carrots every two weeks, mm -hmm. depending upon the size of the bed. It might be more or less often. Um, and everything is planted to, to a system. Even things like uh, strawberries, as an example, are good for three years. We plant a new crop every 12 months. We remove a crop every 12 months. There are three beds full of strawberries. So it's just looking at it and doing it. And we record it. We record where we plant, when we plant. And that helps us too to make sure that we're rotating our crops because some crops like sweet potato and corn are pretty hard on the soil. So you don't want to mm -hmm. be planting those crops back in anytime soon. You want to see two or three crops in between. So you're using your systems to tell you when to plant, when to fertilise, but then you're also recording what you've planted so that you know where to move, and in what beds, so that what you know bed, where so to move them. So not when to plant it again in particular. Not, look, okay. it's not such a big deal with some, but with most crops, the, better, the more you can rotate, the better. Okay. It just gives you healthier soil. Okay, now... Um, we don't want to be monoculture. We want to have variety yeah. and, and we want the, the systems to keep going through. So I love a good system and I love the organisation. So I just had the privilege of <laughs> Having a looking bit of a look. in Bill's filing cabinet and we opened the drawer and there were all of these files, each one labelled with a different fruit tree. So the so files related to the fruit trees. Right. No, there's vegetable files oh, as well. Vegetable yes, files so as, well. as can an, give us a bit of I a, can give you an bit overview. Of an idea so, for example, that's bananas. Okay. Now, I've recorded in there some good videos that I get. I spend a lot of time on on YouTube, so I'm looking at stuff on YouTube. I don't want to watch a lousy YouTube video again, so I'll record a lousy YouTube video. It might only be six minutes, but why watch it again? So okay. I record it. So in here, I also record when we prune when we fertilise, when we do all sorts of things. So, for example, with bananas, we typically, fer we don't fertilise bananas as regularly now because we throw all our excess stuff into the banana plantations. But if we were looking at, at any, any of our fruit trees, I'll have recorded, it might be March, blood and bone, December, compost. Can we have and a look? that just happens automatically. So th this is here. You've got the fertilising schedule, March, September and you're seeing exactly what it is that you do at that time okay and then this is the record under that's this, the record under there then you've actually recorded what you've done and we get amazing fruit yeah. amazing fruit super projects I suppose by recording it gives you that option if it wasn't that successful you can then change it change now it. the hard work is in actually starting and getting the system going once the system's going it's easy to maintain Mm -hmm. The hard work's just, like all things, the hard work is getting the bed up to a certain point and getting it through the first couple of years. The hard part with growing a fruit tree is getting it this big with a trunk on it that wide. Yeah. Once you've done that, the hard then work's it's... over. Okay. okay. Put the work in, get the result. Okay, so do you have an overall thing? So that's bananas, but so, you know, we're coming into, um, we're end of September, so we're going to start off October. Do you have something that says, in October, this is what I need to do? So what I do, oh, okay. and I've got several several of these, they're 
I have a, what I call a monthly calendar for certain things. So okay. let's talk about vegetables as an example. So for example, uh, here's my veggie garden calendar. This is more for plantings. So in September, I had to plant beans, capsicums, turmeric and ginger, melons and squash, and replant sweet potatoes. Um, if it comes to fertilizing, and some of the crops are, are perennial, so they're crops that go longer than a year. In September, we had, and you can read them out. What do we have to do in, well, what, do we, what do we have to do in October? Harvest garlic, staghorns, put banana peels there, and potash and coffee to potatoes. <laughs> so, and for example, nightshades need Epsom salts every so often. So okay. four times a year, we give our nightshades some Epsom salts. Okay, now are you recording under there how many plants you're planting? Like, are you saying I need, um, you know, because that's also knowing, um, especially when you're starting out, you know, you put four tomato plants in and then maybe that's enough, but you put four, of, four you can't put four carrots in. You need no. to know. Okay, you need a bed, so how bed many, size. Yeah, so Look, a, how a, do you... A bit of that's trial and error, because I, I see occasionally on some of the Facebook groups where people will say you need this and this, but a lot of it depends on your diet. Now, our diet's 90% fresh fruit and vegetables. So someone like us, who has almost no processed food, I'm going to eat more fruit and vegetables than someone that has wheat mix for breakfast mm -hmm. and Hungry Jacks for lunch and maybe has a bit of steak and three veg for, for tea. So we know what we need. So as an example for us, we plant three beds in pumpkin paddock of garlic a year. That gives us all the garlic we need. We know that if we plant six beds of watermelon, that'll give us all the watermelon we need. That just comes from a bit of for trial and error okay. of, of what you need to do for yourself. So for somebody starting out, um, would you say that those first few years then, it's about starting with the general plan? And, and just then, keep adding and, and improving. Keep adding and recording Absolutely. it. And, and recording if, you, it. if you didn't have enough watermelons that year, plant some more the following year. Plant some more. Yep. And, okay. if you didn't, and if you had too many, cut back. Or, give or, them, give them or don't, don't give them away, oh. swap them. Yeah. Or freeze them or okay. store them. That leads us to the next part very nicely. Nice segue. So when you do have things like watermelon that are not going to grow the whole year, but you told us earlier you have smoothies every day, you want the bananas, the watermelon, that kind of thing. How are you storing um, well, look, what, all your fruit and veggies? Like what are you doing? When we really became quite self-sustainable and we were giving away a lot of produce, I kept saying to Carol, why are we giving away stuff that we're going to have to buy in three months' time? Mm. Because watermelon doesn't grow for 12 months of the year. So we started looking at options. We, we built a cellar where we store some produce. But the second op thing we looked at was we knew we had to preserve a lot of the crops. And for us, the best option was to freeze it. Freezer. So now we freeze okay. a lot of our crops and we use two good-sized freezers. And those two freezers about where they are, if we have more frozen than what we've got, we're not gonna use it. Mm -hmm. So we don't want excess that we're gonna throw away either. Yes. So it becomes a balancing act of that okay. as well. And they're both upright freezers? Tr started and three or four years ago with a chest freezer, big mistake. Too hard. Too hard, didn't think how productive we were going to be. Yeah. And now we've only got the, the upright freezers. Okay, so for anybody who likes things to be organized, this is just gonna be such a treat. I can't wait we're to We're only gonna look this. at one? Just look at this one. This the one, okay. No, I'll let Vanessa you find her way here. Ready? And this is it. Oh, sorry about that. Everything labelled. Absolutely beautiful. What I I'll close that before you lose all your cold air. Now, now the, I the key with it too is. May I? You can grab something here. Let's just and then I'll close the door. Thank you. No, I'm closing You're okay? Otherwise, you, otherwise you won't be able to open it. Oh, okay. Back in cell. So, can you just walk me through here? What if you've prepped it all? Because this is really important. You can't just put a whole watermelon in a freezer. You've prepped so it. So, what Carol has done there, the watermelon is cut to the size that we use okay. in our breakfast drinks. The broccoli is cut to the size that Carol's most likely to use that in stir fries mm -hmm. or soups. So, it's all prepared to suit. Okay. Now, there's nothing, we eat the produce, and most guard, most vegetable or fruit growers would, uh, would be doing the same. Ideally, you want to pick and eat within 24 hours. That's how you get your best nutrients. Now, if you can't pick and eat because you've got too much, 
your best next best option then is to pick and freeze yeah. within 24 hours because okay. you're sealing in all the all the vitamins and minerals and all the good gear you yeah. need to keep the the machine that is you yes going effectively very well so take the time prepare it chop them to the right size now can i ask about the cauliflower the broccoli are you just cutting and freezing that or are you doing no carol blanches them so okay. most of the brassicas that's your broccoli, cabbage kale etc is hot water boiling water for 30 seconds to a minute then into cold water and then straight into containers and frozen wonderful and so this is what is when you can get this down pat and your folder system, that's what can allow you to actually seriously make a dent, I think, on, on what you're growing, actually being able to produce for your family. Well, what you're also We're doing... We're doing some rain. We're that's just this beautiful. It hasn't rained here. It's so dry. <laughs> we can just hear a little bit of rain. I think it's just going to be a tease, but anyway, yeah. we'll see what yeah. happens. What you're trying to do, of course, is obviously anything you grow yourself, once, one, you feel good about. Secondly, you know... It's not, it hasn't been sprayed or covered in wax or anything. It's the best produce you can get. And it's just lovely getting your own stuff fresh. Oh, yeah. You feel good about yourself. Yeah. Well, Bill and Carol, Carol's inside. She's making us lunch. I tell you, I sometimes, I think we're the luckiest people. We're here on, on a road trip. It's myself, it's Vanessa behind the camera. And we've got Kerry here as well from the Sanford Edible Garden Trail team. And the best thing is uh, we've driven an hour and a quarter south of Brisbane and we're about to get lunch prepared to it for us. All fresh from Carol, the garden. All fresh from the garden, so, uh, which is such a treat. And um, have a look at the other videos. We've taken three videos from Tullamore Farm and you can also look on the Facebook page and you can come and do some tours. Uh, but please keep following the, the trail, Sanford Edible Garden Trail, on our Facebook page or YouTube channel. And we're just, we're a community initiative. We're just wanting to encourage people like us to grow a little bit more food in our own backyards and for all of the benefits that you get from that. And so thank you very much for sharing Been our this, pleasure. this knowledge of yours and show us your, showing us your beautiful place. And um, I know that there'll be so many people. It's not hard. A lot just of ideas. get started. Get started. So thank you very much, Bill, and um, we'll see you again in two weeks at the next garden. Bye.